and it was very interesting, Lord Carey, on the way out, bought a transistor radio, a transistor radio in 1961, my God, and something else, you know, and he had it, and he was listening to BBC radio service, uh, I think that's what you call it, and 30 minutes after a message would be sent from the roof of the building to the battalion headquarters about the situation, Lord Carey would hear it on the BBC World Service, on the radio. And then they knew that somebody was, uh, had a radio and they came in looking for Frank Williams. Uh, it had been hidden on the roof and the antenna in the clothesline. And the fellas took Frank Williams and they hid him for half a day up the chimney. And the enemy couldn't find him and they took the radio, but they didn't get Frank Williams. <laughs> Visits from the news media and the Red Cross at this stage, uh, which was uh, welcome. Uh, messages from families at home. Uh, this is linked with me. I was 16 at the time, and during the Battle of Jadavu, um, my mother had one of the few phones in that room. She was getting calls every now and again from the Command Duty Officer from Army Headquarters. I'd be told what it was. I'd get on a bicycle, I'd cycle to all the housing estates in that room, and the minute my bike arrives, at the, they come running out. The sentries waiting for me. And I said, no news, or this news, or that news. On the Friday in Jadavu, uh, the evening herd had it that everybody in Jadavu killed, company massacred, officers executed by firing squad. And um, uh, that was a bad day in that home. And there was a power failure in that home, it became known as Black Friday. On that Black Friday, that was the evening herd of that. A year later, they apologized. Uh, Saturday morning came, we didn't know what was happening. Wives of officers came uh, to, to my mother and NCO's wives and so on, and uh, what's happening and so on. We're trying to figure out how do we have funerals and services without bodies, so we never get them back. All of Saturday went like that, and uh, let's say the, the, the wives were brilliant. They were really brilliant, you know. It was a very, very tough time for them. Uh, Sunday morning came, message to my mother, they're alive. Prisoners but alive. I got on my bicycle, Client duty officer came out of that long uh, custom barracks and his staff car, whose owned curtain, he left the army as a commander, uh, and uh, he came and down to the same, pulled up beside me where I was about to tell everybody. So 16 years of age, I stepped back and let the commander tell it. And he got out of the car, tears running down his face, and uh, they all thought the worst. And he said, no, no, wipe me in his face. No, 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 he said, throw the line, throw the line. Well, we were jumping for joy and dancing around the streets, and so on. Then, the army gave me an old tape recorder, a spool tape recorder, which I still have the spoons, and um, I went around to all the houses in Athlone. Couldn't get to Longford, couldn't get to Monagar or Galway. But I went all around everywhere in Athlone uh, and I took uh, messages uh, from Sergeant Mark McCabe with his daughter Valerie and I want to say mess uh, hello to Sergeant Mark McCabe. Uh, Joe, I have a message coming back from your dad uh, and so on. And I put these on the spool, put them into the Red Cross. A week later they were out in Jadavu in the prison camp. My father called people in, played the message to them, and then taped over would be their messages back to their families. And I have those. And I put them all on CDs. My son was good at this, put them on CDs. And so I would give them to certain families and so on that I can find. Them. And um, in those days, very stilted. You know, you'd have a, a man, a married man with five kids. And he wouldn't say to his wife, I love you, darling, and said, Dear wife, blah, 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 and here I find one way to me. I'll be home for Christmas. Johnny, I hope you're doing what your mother tells you now. <laughs> study for the reason, sir. You know, this kind of thing. And they were unsure. In those days, talking to a tape or something. But anyway, I had 